Welcome to Course 2, Unit 2, Lesson 3, What is a Yield Curve? In this lesson, we have two lesson objectives. The first one is to know what a yield curve is, and the second lesson objective is, how can I use a yield curve to predict market behavior? So let's get started. When you get into stock and bond investing, everyone wants to be able to predict the future. But in most cases, that's pretty hard to do, and it's pretty much impossible to do. But one of the little tools that we have uh, at our disposal to help um, analyze where our current market condition is and where it might be going in the future is a yield curve. So this is a really important tool that uh, you really got to understand in order to be a successful stock and bond investor. So what is a yield curve? So on the screen I have uh, a yield curve, a generic yield curve, and if you look over on the left um, there's the yield and that goes on your y-axis and you can see it runs from 1% up to 5.5% on this particular graph. And all that yield is, is that's your interest. Then as we look at the bottom on our x-axis, we can see that that's the term. And uh, from the previous lessons that you learned in course one about bonds, uh, you learned that the term is nothing more than the years until the bond matures, until that par value is repaid to the investor. So what this is, is it's a comparison between the yield and the term. So as we look at this particular chart, um, this is considered a positive yield curve because it starts over there with the short term of one year and the yield is, is low at um, about 2.3%. Okay, And then as you go further into the term, as you move right across the chart, that yield continues to increase which naturally makes sense. You, you would think that this would be generally how all yield curves are, but they're not. But you would think that as the term increases, the yield that one would be willing to lend their money at would also increase. So as we look at this one, uh, for one year, we, we said that the yield is about 2.3%. And then as we would go clear over to the 30-year mark, we can see that the 30-year mark is around 5%. So if you were going to lend your money for, for 30 years, you would get 5% on your money based off of this yield curve. So you can see how that changes over time. So let's look at another one. So when we look at this yield curve, this is considered a flat yield curve, meaning that if you were going to lend your money for one year, you would get 5% interest or about 4.9% interest on this chart. And if you lend it for 30 years, you'd almost make the exact same yield on your money which really doesn't make a lot of sense and you might be wondering why in the world that would be the case, but we'll discuss that in just a little bit. But for right now, all you have to really understand is just how I'm reading these numbers off the chart. So if you were gonna buy a 15 year bond, um, you'd look at this chart and you'd go from 15 years right up until you hit the line and you could see that you'd get a 5% yield. Now, uh, a chart that's really uncommon to see is, is an inverse yield curve. Okay, and you can see on this chart, if you were going to buy a bond at one year uh, term, you'd get a 4% yield. Had a two year bond, it would be a 5% yield. And just so you know, it, if it's one year, it's not considered a bond, it's actually considered a bill. So the, cr the proper terminology is a bill at that point. So, um, but as you go into the duration, uh, you can see how this chart is going down. So the 30-year the bond is below 3.5%, but if you're lending your money in the short term, you're actually making more. So that really doesn't make much sense. But as we discuss further in this lesson, you're going to understand why and, and when you'll see a chart like this, which is very, very rare. You won't see one like this very often. Okay, so let's look at where we're at right now. Um, 11 May 2012, and, and this is a U.S. Treasury yield curve, okay? And as we look at this yield curve, we can see in the short term, look at how low those interest rates are. Now, this is still uh, the reason that those interest rates are so low in the short term is because the, the federal government is trying to spark the economy, get people to get out and spend because there's still a lot of fallout from the 2008 crash. Um, and we're still seeing the effects of that in 2012. But if you look at that one year mark for the yield, you can see it's it's below 0.5%, so that's extremely low. And as you can look uh, out to the 30 year, uh, it's only 3%. So that's where we're at in our current market condition on 11 May 2012. So what's important about those yield curves? Um, 
That yield curve is a valuable tool that can help you as an investor understand what the federal government is trying, how they're trying to steer the economy. Um, so when we look at that yield curve, okay, we see it flat. Let's say the whole yield curve is flat at 5%, like this one right here. Okay. When we think about how the, what the federal government's thinking, they are trying to slow down the economy at this point. They, they are making the price of borrowing money expensive, especially for that person in the short term and in the long term at 5% because they're trying to slow down the economy. And the forecast in the long term is exactly the same as it is in the short term. So you're typically going to see a flat or an inverse yield curve whenever the economy is doing well, because that's the way that the Fed is trying to slow down the economy because they don't want a big bubble to occur. Because whenever the bubble gets too big, it pops and we go into a major recession. So the Fed tries to control that by these two. When you see these two charts, that's when the Fed is trying to slow down the economy. Now, when the Fed's trying to create spending and spark the economy, we're going to have a chart that looks like this. Okay, In the short term, the, the, the money to borrow is really cheap. And when it's cheap, people spend. And in the long term, they're, they're predicting, when you go out to that 30 years, the estimate is that over a 30-year period, the average yield is probably going to be around 5%. So when we look at our condition of where we're at right now on 11 May 2012, you can see that the Fed is still trying to cr create spending in our economy by keeping those interest rates very low. Even at the 30 year, it's only at 3%, and that's extremely low. And so they still project that we're in a, in a recession, and, and they're wanting the U.S. economy to spend more money. So when we calculate the intrinsic value of a stock in Course 2, Unit 3, um, which is the next unit, uh, we'll be using the value found on the yield curve for the 10-year federal note. So if we go back to the yield curve here and we look at the 10-year mark, you can see that we're approximately 1.7, 1.8, right in that range for the 10-year uh, federal note. And now that might not make much sense right now as you're looking at this uh, chart, but when we get into the next lesson, you're going to see how that applies when we apply it to our intrinsic value calculator. So I'm going to show you something really neat. We're going to go to the ustreasury.gov uh, website, and I have the website listed there below. So if you want to go there and, and see what I'm doing here, that's, that's the link. So here's our chart, and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how yield curves change uh, over time with the Dow Jones. So here's our chart, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to the website. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the uh, screen split in half here, and I have the U.S. Department of the Treasury pulled up on the right-hand side, and I have the Dow Jones from 1995 up to 2000. If you don't remember that era, uh, during that time, the economy was going through a boom due to the Internet. And so at around 2000, uh, we kind of saw the peak of the Internet bubble. And so let's look at how this the Treasury yield curve looked back at the beginning of 2000. So um, you can change the dates right here. So we put in 2000, January. The, uh, it must have been on a weekend for the 0, 1, 0, 2, so we'll just use 0, 3 here. And we hit go, and there's our chart. So this is what the yield curve looked like back in 2000. Now, as we look at this yield back then, it was at 6 to 7%. Uh, as you go clear out to the 30-year term, which is a very high interest rate. That's a great interest rate. Um, so you can see back in 2000, the federal government, they knew darn well what was going on, and you can see a nice flat yield curve and how they were trying to slow down the economy with very high interest rates across the board. So let's go ahead and look at what happened as time marched on after the year 2000. Okay, so you can see that I adjusted the Dow Jones. Uh, now it's from 2000 up to 2011 is our time frame that we're looking at for the Dow Jones. And you can see back in 2000 at the very beginning where we just pulled up the yield curve chart and we had a, we had a nice normal flat uh, yield curve chart and it was at a high interest rate. So let's look what happened uh, when we go into the beginning of 2001, which would be this time frame right here where my mouse is at. So let's go ahead and plug that in. Let's change the date to 2001 and click go. 
And as you can see, it's actually starting to get a little bit inverted, um, which I said before is very rare. So when you see that inverted uh, yield curve, you know that there's probably something coming down the pipe where interest rates, the, the federal government's anticipating interest rates going lower, which means they're somewhat predicting a recession at that point. So almost a 6% yield at the three month uh, bill. And as you go out to the 30 year, it's actually down to 5.4. So that time frame was right here at 2001, right before the uh, 2002 crash. Um, and it wasn't a deep crash, but it was somewhat of a crash back then. So let's look what happened to the yield curve in 2002 um, in 2003, whenever it crashed. So here it is for 2002. Look at what that yield curve looks like. You can see that the yield is very low in the short term. And in the long term, the Federal Reserve is predicting that interest rates will rise again over that 30 year period. But in the short term, they've got to keep them low. So let's look at what it looks like in 2003, where it's still kind of a deep recession there you can see that it's even lower, so they're trying to spark that economy. So there it shows you how the Federal Reserve is basically showing you exactly what kind of situation you're in. So let's go ahead and look at the really deep recession in 2008, and we'll start at 2006 to see how the yield curve changes over time. So let's go to 2006, and there you go. They already, they already saw that the economy had recovered, that yield curve started going flat, and I bet you when we go to 2007, you're going to see that that 4% to 5.5% yield curve is actually even going to get higher because they're going to try to slow it down. So let's go to 2007 and see what happens. So there we go, 2007, and we're, we're right here on this peak. Okay, here we go. And you can see that it's even higher. It's up at 5% opposed to where it was at before. And you can see it's slightly getting inverted in 2007. Okay, so let's look at what happened in 2008. That's when they started getting the crash, and you're going to see that, that the Fed's already preparing for it. You can see how you're starting to get that, that positively sloped yield curve, and that's the, that's the Fed tipping their hat that there's a recession coming. Now, how deep the recession, nobody knows that or can predict that, but you do know that there's somewhat of a recession coming. Then as we go to 2009, you're going to see it get pretty drastic here, I'm sure. Okay, yeah, almost down to 0% on your short terms. And then on your long terms, it's still very low rate at 3%. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to read a yield curve and how you can use that um, as kind of a predictor um, as to what's coming next and how the Federal Reserve is basically telling you uh, how to look at the economy and, and the direction that it's going. So uh, I hope that that tool really works out well for you. Um, remember that whenever we get into the next section where we're valuing stocks, we're going to be coming over here to the 10-year mark and moving straight up on this yield curve and reading that value, which uh, for this date in 2009 of January, it was 2.46%. So let's, let's quickly pull up here where we're at in 2012. And the date is May. Okay, so let's just go there. So if you come over to the 10 year, you'd come up and it's at 1.98%. So when we get into the next section, we're gonna be using around 2% in order to calculate the intrinsic value of our stocks. So that concludes course two, unit two, lesson three. What is a yield curve? We learned what a yield curve was and we learned how to use the yield curve to predict market behavior. So I hope you guys learned a lot in this lesson and I'll see you in the next lesson.